himself because that raised his average at probably above 90% now. So <laughs> that's really impressive. I mean, for anyone, even if you can argue that it's only been a couple matches, uh, to maintain that I don't know. Match. They've already. This is their fifth best of three. It's not like they've only That's played true, two. Yeah. Yeah. Five. It's pretty impressive for four best of threes having 89 percent and then it's raising it in that last game too. So. All right. Well, the Sivir ban actually. So they're not. They don't want to first pick that. They don't want to give it away. They want to prioritize something else in that first pick. And there we go. Sejuani will be taking away this game. So, Jinnah are actually banning out some champions, banning out the Sivir that they took in the first round of the draft yeah. on the red side last game. LeBlanc banned. Surprising, considering Sasen has been pretty good on that champion overall. Azir, Cassiopeia, and Bard were their bans last game, so pretty different bans from both sides. Sivir and Sejuani for Jinnah, so not repeating any of their bans from the last game yet. Oh man, the best trill by Junior Green Wings would be if Bard is open, let Che play at this game, and we would never see Sweet's Bard. <laughs> it would be a mystery. <laughs> well, the Rex side being fanned out, so Junior is just forcing Spendu and saying, hey, so do we get Gragas for free, or do you ban that out, and do we get something like Azir Alistair. or Alistair? They're getting something. They're getting either yeah. Gragas or Alistair as a first pick. Just which one is it going to be? They were very afraid of Kuzan's... Oh, so Spenner saying, nope, we get one of them too. Wow, that's that's a lot of power picks available, that's a actually. Lot. Uh, we've got the Azir and the Cassiopeia open. We've got the Alistair and the Gragas. I mean, we have obviously some other very favorable picks in mid lane, uh, in the support role, even as AD carries. The others not being as uh, commonly banned, but still, I mean, this can make picks quite interesting. Yep, and will it be a new new in the first round? That would be a rather interesting response from Spenu uh, Sonic Boom. I feel like that says so much though about what you're going for. Uh, yeah, especially since they like nuclear to play Jinx, and yeah. Azir is still up. So I mean, if I'm Jinair at this point and I see <laughs> new new Alistair locking in, I'm probably going to take Azir yeah. right now. Absolutely, and then try and take Hecarim later yeah. in the draft. Okay, so the Morgana, but still, or okay, the Rumble prioritizing that top lane pickup for Soul. Had a mediocre game last game. Got caught a couple times with a split push, and that really punished him. Although, to be fair, Genera Green Wings really took advantage of that situation when Soul was split pushing. So, will we see that ash from Captain Jack? I want to see two? it. We Me haven't too. seen it in Korea yet. I really want to know why he's been playing it so much. What does he think of it? I just like Ash in theory because I think it opens up so many choices for especially top laners that can suddenly start playing bully or more carry top laners that have trouble engaging because you can rely on the Ash arrow to engage and just have secondary engage on your top laner. That's where a champion like Kennen can be really useful. Very true. Uh, of course, Ash also being a stationary champion, uh, maybe a little bit worried with the Rumble and the Alistair on the other side. You can get picked off so easily. And so we might see that Corky, who has a little bit more mobility. Just all around, you know, well-rounded AD carry champion. Has good mixed damage, has the poke, has some burst in lane, and the Nautilus in place for Che. Most likely. Could be Trace. Yeah, that's the... That's the real kicker about Jinair is you never know whether that actually is a flex pick for them. There are two teams, Jinair and Najin, for which we know that that is a flex pick champion. Well, with Jinair, you never really know if any champion could be played by Trace. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, that's... You, ne you can never count him out. <laughs> Whoa. Nuclear. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Nuclear liked playing the new Ash. I mean, just given what he's shown us a lot of power and whatnot, but I think Lucian will fit his role within the team a little bit better. Just has to be more reliable in terms of putting out constant damage. And Evelyn, so catch thinking, well, they can't kill me in the jungle if they can't see me. <laughs> I'm safe. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good method. With the Rek'Sai being banned out, the Tremor Sense not going to allow constant vision of the Evelyn in the enemy jungle. And so the mid lane being saved for last, pretty common for most teams. And Sasin will have his choice of champion after checking out what 
Kuzan plays. Azir is open. Granted, so is Cassiopeia, but I mean, Kuzan has played that Azir before. Yeah, we haven't seen Kuzan's Cassiopeia yet, but we may get the opportunity to right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, Kuzan, it's not a bad pick at all in this situation, and also it's a good chance for him to prove that his champion pool is respectable. And look at that, Trace is actually forced to play something not Rumble or Maokai for the first time this season, <laughs> and it will be going back to an old staple in NAR, of course, doing very well in, against Rumble in lane, and now it's the answer to Cassiopeia going to be, that has been Sassen's answer to Azir, but oh. it will be the Varus. All right. Well, I mean, sure, if Varus gets caught, he dies, but he can catch Cassiopeia just as well from long range. Cassiopeia, not a very mobile champion if you get the ult down first. Yeah, should be just a lot of zoning in the early game. We'll see how the Cassiopeia does up against this Varus. Probably will have a bit of a tricky time laning, but Sonic Boom looking at a really hard mid-game power spike, and then a disastrous nosedive <laughs> with Rumble, 280 carries, and an Evelyn into the late game. I would not want to fight Janair and 35 minutes into this game, if I had even gold or anywhere near even gold, if I was spending Sonic Boom, they've got lots of good engage too. That Gragas is a yeah. big problem yeah. for Varus. That's yeah. a big problem <laughs> for mean, Varus. What do you do? Even Rumble, right? I mean, you could just burst in there after the explosive cast. But even Lucian to an extent, I mean, sure, he can dash out, but just disrupting team and spinning Sonic Boom can just end the siege at any time and then force a fight. It's the strength of Gragas. Yeah, well. His ultimate has always been great, which is one of the reasons why if he's anywhere near viability, he ends up in the pro scene. Absolutely. And he's been relevant pretty much every season, at least for a small bit since season one. So we'll find out how well Chaser does this time in kill contribution as we jump into game number two. Just like that, kickoff game number two. Jinair leading 1-0 in this best of three. Now, as you mentioned, Monty, I mean, Spenu does have that huge mid-game spike. So can they get there? A lot of that, as usual, is going to rely on the jungler. Well, at least we're, they're not concerned with going to late game with this composition, which has been their kryptonite. So if they can hold things together for long enough in the mid game, maybe they can pull it off. I will say one thing I'm impressed with in terms of Sasin's play is that he has a pretty decent champion pool for a new player. Yeah. Has shown a lot of versatility. Uh, now we're, we're seeing a, an AD champion that he can play. We've seen his Lulu, we've seen his LeBlanc. So there's a, there's a lot that he's, that he's able to play in a lot of different styles. Yeah, she's getting some damage on the Chaser, but he gets body slammed and poisoned. So you might want to yeah, go home very quickly to come back in order to start the jungle on time. Many under the same and so that yeah. fan missed Captain Jack. It's been a while since I've been to Young Sun, so please show us a hard carry game. <laughs> Captain Jack, still in the hearts of many fans. Yeah, I mean, Captain Jack was such a hero in Season 2. Well, even in Season 3, he had great performances throughout. That's true. Most of that year as well, part of that massive win streak from CJ Blaze in the spring season of that year. So yeah. <laughs> definitely a major player and contributor. Looks like Captain Jack and Che just going to take the small Krug and Trundle off to lane. I miss Trundle. I don't. He's really boring to watch. I, I love Trundle. I love playing Trundle. Yeah, he's pretty boring to watch, though. I'll, I'll agree. His ultimate is one of the most boring things in the universe, Chodra. <laughs> <laughs> it's also just bad because it's it's really difficult to understand as a viewer what goes on yes, with it. that is true. Because it's like, oh, he siphoned off this power, but there's no way to for to visually represent this. Does, does he not get bigger? I don't remember. I think he gets slightly bigger in size. Does he, but I don't think the enemy champion gets slightly smaller. Or right, like and, that. He, you and know he gets what I mean? so many stats from that that the size alone doesn't really indicate. It's, all, it's really horrible. <laughs> but I love playing him. Never die. 
always the last one alive. Pretty much the same with Maokai, but All funnier because right. you're a troll. Now that his uh, now that his pillar of ice has been buffed, we can see even more sick Trundle Yasuo <laughs> combos. That's what I'm looking forward to. Catch a uh... catch cannot do that. Though. There, there we go. Okay, I was getting a little bit worried. This might come up right at the end. There we go. So no action yet. Just pretty simple, clear. Not going to see any level two ganks in this game. Soul playing pretty far back in the lane. So far has that door and shield just to get that sustain. And uh, Sasa not really slowing down Kuzan too much yet. Yeah, you know, I was thinking that when we were talking about it earlier, it's Varus' range isn't exactly the longest out of the AD carry, so he's going to have a bit of a tough time until he can get that tier to start poking with his skills, but by then, Kuzan might have farmed up his own tier to just shove it back. So, you know, I think this is actually just going to turn into a farm fest where Kuzan actually has the advantage of going all in first if the jungler is there. Okay, well, speaking of junglers being there, catch in all the right. top side to make something happen, but the lane is pushing up, so Trace This is a just really go. awkward time to try and gank that lane. The minion wave the way it is, and Trace playing so conservatively. This is where Catch says, not ganking top anymore. Can't gank. <laughs> Too bad. How'd Doesn't. you expect me to do that anyway, Doob? <laughs> Doesn't get the hit for Sassin in the mid lane, so it's just going to continue being passive. Well, both junglers also getting scuttle crabs. And deep wards coming in from Spenu. A soul just really wanted to play safely. And doesn't have the ultimate here, so he's not gonna find an angle. So catch. I mean, he's showing initiative to want to be a little bit more aggressive, but he's not there at the right times nor the right angles to make it happen. Right. He seems to be coming into these lanes right as he can't really make a good gank, yeah. or the pressure isn't there for him to do so. And instead, Ketch is going to be found, not only by a ward, but by the wolf buff. Chaser doesn't care. He's going to continue doing his grump yeah, and, and get some good wards out. down just to keep eyes on this Evelyn. Evelyn is going to have to back off and go into the top side. But Chaser taking the entire bottom side of that jungle, both camps that were up. And now, here comes Che out of the bottom lane. Well, they do see that ward, so Chase are just going to clear that out first. Chase still hanging around. He's going to head back down bottom. They did see him leave with the ward in the river in the brush, and they'll see him come back. So everyone playing safely once again. Now this time around, the top lane looks a little bit more advantageous for Spenu for a gank. Yeah, still the problem is they don't have hard CC. Yeah, I mean, what can you do? You can try to force a flash and maybe that's about it, or push him back so that Soul can catch up a little bit more in CS. I think that's the greatest advantage you can get in top lane right now. Meanwhile, Sasin is in a little danger. Now, Kuzan doesn't have level six yet though, so Chaser trying to wait because he doesn't have his ult either. Yeah, they Meanwhile, need Sasin him to get level his. six before they can do this. Kuzan finally gets it, but. Oh, nice poke onto Kuzan. And of course, still more regen left on Sasin, starting with the flask and the biscuits. So he's just looking to really poke out Kuzan and get advantage that way. Yeah, the, the issue is that Cassiopeia and this Varus are gonna hit power spikes with, in terms of itemization at about the same time, obviously yeah. Varus is going to be stronger earlier in the game while Cassiopeia is still trying to stack up her passive, uh, as well as just the item efficiency and the overall DPS in the team fight going to be much greater for Cassiopeia later on in the game. But I'm not really, I agree with you, Chobra, in terms of the tier buys here, I'm not very convinced that Sassen's going to take a convincing 1v1 lane advantage, which means that it comes down to the team play that Sonic Boom has to set up sieges and then push the advantage through in that manner. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, the Chains of Corruption, it's an ultimate kind of famed among AD carries to be very hard to hit. So whoever could hit them well would often be the only ones playing that champion, even in previous metas. Now, the other thing also is that Cassiopeia, once she hits that second buff from her passive, is it just has an easier choice in terms of all inning in the 1v1 duel, because you can just keep putting out your twin fangs, whereas Varus, like, either you have to stutter step perfectly or just back out. So Cassiopeia basically, I think, has the upper hand in determining how this lane plays out. Yeah, and you move faster, too. Yeah, and you move faster. So huge. 
Varus, I mean, you kind of also as Varus have to fight back, but it doesn't feel as good. So. You, al you also notice that there's an early boots here for Kuzan also. So using oh, the speed to dodge the Varus skill shots as well as punish them more severely. So we could see this. Kuzan gets an opportunity. This could be punished super hard. Yes, absolutely. Sure, you don't have the ignite, but you still have that damage over time from your poison. And Sasin, I mean, sure, pick up, picked up the pickaxe, uh, so his poke will do a little more damage when it hits, but he basically has to play a lot more passive. Nuclear has to dash out of the phosphorus bomb, and Captain Jack having a slight lead over to Nuclear. Surprising, actually. Uh, Considering that Jack was able to acquire this lead pre-6. Yeah where Lucian typically shines over most other AD carries. Oh, and Vivid's not level 6 yet, so just getting some damage onto him before he hits that ultimate. And there it goes. But yeah, I think Captain Jack's been using his Foster Spawn really well on Che, just staying a little bit more up front so that Nuclear had to be forced to a dash out of it, otherwise he might get caught under the burst. So well played by that duo. Vivid not able to do too much standing in front pre-6. Now with the heals and whatnot, I'm just gonna pulverize to even out the lane a little bit. Yeah, Trace not taking a big advantage yet, but he has the hex finger now, and this is where the Nar can start to run away with the lane a little bit. Nice hit from Sasin. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: you just you have to hit a couple in succession, but Chaser shows up, and he's not gonna be able to get it with the chains of corruption coming in. Catch a little too low to start the fight, though. So, yeah, I mean, this is the thing: Varus has to play so reserved and just so manually against this Cassiopeia. And you get the ult out right there, and get a massive edge in terms of the poke damage just yeah. from the Cassiopeia E. Yes, he does have that Crystalline Flask and a bunch of biscuits, but he has to use a lot in order to deal with that gank. Chaser, on the other hand, has his passive to heal up, can just go Rangers, Trailblazer, smite a, a camp in the forest to instantly regenerate that lost HP. Yeah, that was a really good gank. Simply walking forward from Chaser and Sasin now in complete danger of a gank. Catch is heading towards the bottom lane, but Chaser's there too. And Catch actually chooses to go back, and well, so does Chaser. Neither oh, of these AD mind. carries have gone back home yet to shop. <laughs> They've been in this lane for a long, long time yes. now. It's going to be really hard to kill them, considering that they are sitting on just a giant pile of gold. Oh, and the flash board and the explosive cast, it's going to actually push him out of the foster spot. The Death Star still goes through, but Nuclear is going to survive. Uh, he did have to use both of his summoners, and the Jinnar Green Wings will just shove this in. Looks like they might go for that dragon with the Cassiopeia coming down, or they might actually just go for a dive here if it sticks around. So they'll push it in. The wave is here. So take this wave. Will they still go for the dragon? Yeah, they should definitely go for the dragon right here go. while they have the timing, and they have this Cassiopeia able to put so much damage down on a single target. Uh, do you question is do you let Jack go back right here or do you have him help with the dragon because they should have enough damage that looks like they'll go help with the dragon just for a little bit more speed on that objective and Sasin's waiting for Kuzan and he gets a hit onto him so that Kuzan's not as healthy when he returns to lane trying to make Kuzan pay at least one way from that roam. So interesting, uh, Nuclear going for a fast Vamp Scepter here. Huh. So, it's like he doesn't want to get rocketed out of lane. Now that seems wow. like an odd consideration because he has an Alistair there for sustain. Right. Not sure that's entirely necessary when he really just needs the damage in the mid game. But that said, the Bloodthirster is better for sieging because you can't crit towers. True. So when you have the Bloodthirster, you're able to use that shield to maybe take a turret shot when a minion wave isn't there and get some extra damage down. So if, they're, if you're going with Lucian for full siege, sometimes that BT can be superior if you're trying to hit a, a specific window just to knock down a tower. We'll see if he can catch that. Meanwhile, catch himself. For gang and top still can't find an answer. He does have his ultimate this time. The equalizer there also, but Trace has his flash. Soul just telling quite a bit every time Catch shows up for a gank. And although he Catch hasn't shown up a single time yet, Trace is gonna get caught and he actually bounces on top of Catch's head. 
Both I, ultimates used. I don't know why you think you can gank that lane against yeah. Sonar with flash up. There's almost no way to do it, especially since he's been itemizing for MR. Well, this lane, though, there's the depth charges. Captain Jack charges forward with the Valkyrie. He gets the Foster spawn, but he can't get rockets. It's Vivid's right there. There's a flash forward. Can he get the kill? Explosive cast comes in from Chaser. And Vivid just getting caught behind a little bit, takes a couple extra hits. Meanwhile, Soul has to flash away from danger. Trace just soaking in that minion damage while going for the duel. And there's a blue buff taken away Ooh. from the enemy by Kuzan as well. Sasin making short work of this turret, but they're Svenu definitely going to lose a tower on the bottom side as a massive creep denial from Captain Jack takes place. Be very happy to get that isolated gold from the turret in the end. Has that sheen so he can take it down at his leisure. Meanwhile, Trace actually in the end just getting a flash advantage out of the top side. Yeah. Soul no equalizer to effectively trade with Trace when he used his ultimate. So everything really going in favor of Jin Air right now. Yeah, I mean, in every aspect, Catch has a much better chance of making a gank happen in the two other lanes. I mean, you have the, the, the hard CC lanes. Yeah, you have the chain of corruption. You have the pulverize. You're just you're just not gonna hit that equalizer against Nar is the problem, and you need to open up with that or deal a lot of damage. So unless you can bait him into some sort of all in, especially and perhaps primarily maybe in Mega Nar form, you're just not gonna get anything out of that yeah. because he's he's just so. He has so much escapability when you don't have a stun or a root to well, nail him down. We'll see if Catch learned the lesson and if it's too late or not for Spenu. Uh, Shinner and Green Wings continue to just maintain a small but meaningful lead. Try first finish now for Captain Jack, so Spenu has to watch out. I didn't actually take down the bottom turret, which is interesting. Looks like they just want to prolong the laning phase right now and keep denying it and keep on pressuring this bottom side. Catches down there. Yeah, and Chaser is in top. I'm not sure if Spenu's 100% uh, aware of that one, but Catch going to be seen by Pink Ward, so he'll just go ahead and clear that Vivid. Wasn't prepared close enough. Meanwhile, Soul gets caught with the body slam. There's the slope from the barrel. The equalizer goes down, but it looks like he'll just get taken down by a couple extra auto attacks. Not even Chaser not using that explosive cash, just saving it patiently. Well, I mean, Soul decided to go for a pure magic penetration build here. He knew that Trace was building a Hex Drinker, but decided he didn't need Arm Guard. And that means that he's very vulnerable to the, the extra damage that Chaser has. Very odd choice. Yeah, well, Soul goes down yet again in this game. His first death, uh, the first one, of course, nuclear earlier with that double dive in bottom Five lane. Now look at all these wards coming in from Jinair Green Wings. Catch. I mean, this is the danger with Evelyn. If you can't make something happen early, what's the advantage, really? I agree. That's why I'm not generally a fan of Evelyn in the jungle uh, right now. I just don't think she's as useful as a lot of other junglers. Right. And the, what she brings to the table is is just uncertainty more than anything else, which is a valuable tool in League of Legends for sure, and which is why I always think Evelyn is viable. Uh, because yes. nothing changed about Evelyn to make her played right now besides the fact that Clear Love played her at MSI. <laughs> you know, it's just people are like, oh, wait, that champion's really annoying to play against. Right. And I think what happens is like somebody picks it in scrims. Uh, well, as I talk about, oh Chaser well, Chase is going to get caught with a chain of corruption. He's locked in between four members of Spenu. That's a good kill for Spenu Chaser. A little bit too confident about getting vision I mean, of the enemy jungle. Kuzan wasn't even in mid lane. Like, there's no <laughs> way you can do anything about that ward right now. Very sloppy. But anyway, as I was saying, there. It's not that Evelyn or there have been major jungle changes. Oh, Kuzan gets caught right on the equalizer. Here comes Vivid. Kuzan has to use his petrifying gaze, but a good kill from Spenu as they pick that one up. And Trace is just going to have to back out after the teleport completes. Nice gank from Spenu Sonic Boom. And Kuzan already chunked out a little bit right there. Jack going to take the bottom turret in response, but this is still a nice advantage for Spenu as they look to take out their first dragon of the game. Yeah, well, we do have Chain Captain Jack looking around, but it's a 5v2. All right, here comes Trace, but his Meganar is down for now. I mean, Spenu doesn't really need to be too scared, but they're taking too much time, giving Chaser time to catch up. 
Spenu a little bit too scared from this one. They're going to secure the dragon. Now they need to back out. I don't know if Vivid's going to make it out alive. He's just going to go down. Uh, uh -oh. Spenu is scared of their own situation. As Trace comes in, Mega Nar is available. Flash blown from catch two. Wow, they definitely didn't have to lose a player at that dragon. Yeah. And really committed to it. I know they were scared because of the lack of equalizer, but they had the chain of corruption back up. You, I mean, they're not down by that much at this stage in the game. We'll see what it ends up costing them in the end. Just a little bit of damage onto the tier two, but as I say that, Kuzan taking out the mid lane, and he already has a very fast loot in Zeko. Yeah, it's gonna shove out very quickly. Yeah, I mean, they should have also had a better timer on Chaser and when he was going to return, the Mega Nar was down. I mean, all factors pointed to the fact that if the generic Green Wings decided to engage, they should have been able to take the fight and still finish the Dragon at that point. Right, I agree with you. So, Spenu, uh, I mean, yeah, sure, in the end, they still got the Dragon. They lost a member for it. They lost the Tier 1, but they got what they went there for. It's just that doesn't really give them an edge, per se. Well. To get back to my story about Evelyn, here's my theory on the cycle of Evelyn play in League of Legends. <laughs> Nothing changes about Evelyn. People stop playing Evelyn because once you learn how to play around her, you realize that she's just not as good as other junglers. And uh, if you just ward the camps and keep an eye on her, then you're going to be OK. But what happens is when people don't play Evelyn for a while, and somebody plays Evelyn, they're like, oh man, I forgot how annoying it is to play against Evelyn. Then you play her in scrims, and the other teams don't play against her properly, and you don't get the right vision down, you have no idea where she is, and she kills you a bunch, and they're like, damn, Evelyn's really good. No. It's just you <laughs> forgot how to play against her, and everyone forgets, and then she comes in, everyone remembers how to play, and they're like, well, Evelyn sucks again. And that is the, the cycle of perfe perpetual Evelyn <laughs> in the LOL Pro scene. Makes sense. Uh, I believe it 100%. And yeah, you know, I, I think, like you mentioned, I think she's always relevant in certain situations, but just not every time. And she really is just, she's really just bad in the late game. Yeah, I mean, what are you In comparison do? to Gragas and Sejuani, it's just not much you, that, of value that's being added there. Yeah, look at this, a two-man Baron coming out thanks to that Cassiopeia single target power. Risky. Yeah, Kuzan is running out of mana quite a bit though, so the damage is going to stop right there as Catch comes up. Ache is there, but there's the war, so yeah, they're going to have to back out. Ah, yes, the old two man at spawn Baron <laughs> timing. <laughs> like, that was cute of Jen Air, very well, cute. Well, you know, they tried it, but you know, this is what I've noticed, uh, uh, you know, in other games too, or even in my own play. Like, you can't can't always reliably do a two-man Baron with Cassiopeia unless it's like 45 minutes in, because you're going to run out of mana before that damage actually starts to count. Well, they had more people going over. They just wanted to get to 50%, and then they were going to group up and finish it off. But at Chaser 2, the nice thing about Grog is why you can do that is, again, the, the Drunken Rage percent yes. damage reduction. That does make it possible for you to tank, even if you don't have that many items out of the jungle yet. Now, Nuclear got that Bloodthirster we talked about earlier. You mentioned that it's only worth it if you really want to make sure that you can take down some towers with it. Can he bring yeah. that to reality? There's the Kali coming out. Uh, just going to be blocked completely by Che and his shield. And Vivid actually gets caught back, but there's a Pulverize onto Che. And Che doesn't have damage reduction at this point. There's a Death Charge to disengage. Sasin was about to show up around the corner. He's still there. He knows the pig wars there, and he gets the hit. Oh, Captain Jack has to use both of his Sonar spells to avoid that chain of corruption. I do believe he sliced up just enough with the moon speed for someone to heal, but not taking those chances. And now they've been poked out from the tier one and bottom, still trying uh -oh. to hang around Here as Cassiopeia and Graga shows up. Explosive ch a cask is ready for Chaser. Nice slow from Sasin. The hail of arrows keeping them zoned for now. But Kuzan shows up, has no regard. There is the loot in Zeko. And wow. Why did they just use the explosive cask right there to knock everybody into the tower? Well, I mean, it is an eight health, so I, you wouldn't have had the advantage of the tower, but you still would have had a much advantageous I, I team think fight. they would have died. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe Generic Green Wings just likes to keep as many towers up as possible. You know, that's just their priority. <laughs> well, or maybe Chaser was not confident that he could get damage onto all four members, and therefore he wouldn't get 100% kill contribution. I oh, think that's, that's it. That is actually pretty clutch right there. He's still at 100% in this game. Yep, and there we go. <laughs> He's maybe just comes back to knock that tower down. I, 
they, there wasn't a depth charge there, but without the Chain of Corruption, I think you can still make a play. Absolutely. I would agree. Well, Kuzan uh, does have that one death and no other stats, but he's been putting out a lot of pressure. He's been able to shove all the lanes that he enters. And we'll soon have that Saracen Grace for the shield. Now, Bloodthirster being worked on by Captain Jack. Makes sense. Yeah. Just trying to get some more poke down here. Have that shield against the double AD carry. He wants to be able to survive some of the Varus poke and the Culling poke coming in. Yeah, and of course, just extra poke damage he, against two squishies is always a good idea. He certainly doesn't need a Blade of the Ruin King against the composition that he's <laughs> dealing with. Very true. So looking to get that as his tier two or second item. Uh, does have the Sork Shoes, of course, for the extra burst on his poke. All right, Seraph's just finished for Kuzan. So this is a very good time for the dragon to come up. For Jynair, has that shield now, which will be incredibly helpful in these team fights against the two AD carries. I question the Luden's build first against the team that's running double AD. Right on. I was wondering what the uh, biggest benefit of that in this specific game was. But, you know, he's, he's shoving out just fine, although you can shove out anyway with Cassiopeia. Jinnair Greenway starting this dragon. Both top laners are here. The range meter at about half for Trace, so that's in pretty, that's in a pretty good place. Now catch has been caught and he gets hooked back. There's the ultimate coming in and the equalizer goes down across the board. Kuzan can't flash over the wall. He gets caught. Meanwhile, Trace chasing down nuclear though, and he gets the kill with the stun, and now he's on to Sasin. So the two carries being zoned out from Spendu. Captain Jack is meanwhile still alive. There's the slow, and does the body slam come in? There's the pulverize, and there's the hook, there's the body slam, and the phosphorus bomb for the kill as Captain Jack gets the sheen empowered auto attack. And Kuzan right there really botched his abilities. His yeah. petrifying gaze was also the wrong direction in that little scuffle. It was, yeah, it seemed like he was really caught out by surprise for some reason after they initiated the fight onto a uh, catch there. Well, he did get surprised by the chain of corruption coming over the wall, but in spite of that, yeah, they threw everything at him. They threw a bunch of ults at him. Yeah, but man, if we take a look at this right fine. here, he finds catch. And he gets three ults on him. Now watch this. Oops. Yeah, he flashes like he actually got he like the bounces. trick. The trick ult. <laughs> he bounces into the wall and then ults the wrong way. Now it doesn't matter because they use three ults to kill just him, and Jinair is obviously quite strong in other departments too. So players like Trace and Captain Jack were able to clean that one up due to the investment on a single target. Yeah, I think it was just he was smashing his flash too fast to try to. Uh, jump out as soon as possible and he got the flash ult because of the channel on the petrified gaze but then he like flashed into the wall and it was just a disaster for him. <laughs> but now you know now you know you can ult flash but the Design. most important part of this game chobra chaser's 100 percent kill contribution remains so yes so he will get mvp again and all will be right in the world <laughs> oh chaser really impressive how much he's improved mentioned earlier and yeah the double ad comp still not doing too much good for spenu well, if it's not going to do anything right now it's never going to do anything ever so and then vivid just kind of get caught and his teammates are kind of wondering if they should help him out they finally decide they should so they chase chase her out of there yep it's rough too chaser already has a frozen heart so oh, wow that will be shutting down a lot of the damage from spenu sonic boom soul Going for that Leandries, but now the armor starting to ramp up on Trace as well, who is inching forward into Thornmail territory. Yeah, so you're not going to be able to kill the front line, so you have to kind of, you, you have to poke. And Varus can poke through multiple targets, so that's the only thing they can really hope for at this point. Well, I'm not impressed with Kuzan's sweet deeps build this game. <laughs> it's just not working very well. And we want Chaser body slamming forward, trying to get a catch on to Nuclear with the explosive cast. Doesn't get it, but Trace is shoving out the bottom lane just fine. Uh, catch, meanwhile, has an amazing flank prepared. 
but no one there to back him up. All right, well, they got the hit on Takuza, and he's right there. And there's a Frederick Fight Gaze onto one member as Nuclear backs out just one step to avoid getting stunned. And Trace comes in in Meganar form, but he's not going to have an opportunity to use his ultimate. The poke coming in from Sasin over the wall. But does slow him down though, so they're not going to chase. Now Spenu looking to push down this tier two in mid. Captain Jack avoids the poke, but the harpoons coming in over the wall keep him at bay. Uh, Chaser not able to body slam over the thick part of the wall right there, so he's going to have to just take the traditional route, and the hook not going to hit. Nuclear dash is out of that one. Another minion wave coming in. Soul can't keep both of them at bay as Captain Jack has his own poke. And there's the explosive cast that keeps Nuclear and Cash closer to the tower, but they can't initiate on top of that. Trace wasn't in Meganar form just yet, so Spenu gets a tier two. Yeah, well, they found a pick that they needed right there, set it up, and managed to isolate Kuzan. Kuzan without much in the way of defensive statistics besides a Seraph's Embrace shield, finds himself going down quite quickly. Double pink boards here at the Baron Pit for Jenner Green Wings. Spenu really not going to be taking that anytime soon. Uh, Sasson waiting though, and there is just poke onto Trace. They didn't want to blow everything onto the main tank of the Jenner Green Wings. Although I think they could have tried. All right, yeah. looks like Valve activating the Baron right there. Catch still lurking. There is a pink board seeing him right now. Janeiro looking at that Baron, seeing if maybe they had a little bit of an opportunity to take it, but they did not. Sasan completes his Ghost Blade nice. for extra suicide damage onto Trace's Thornmail. <laughs> I mean, granted, obviously, it is it is a good pickup in this mid Varus with all the other extra stats it gives you and the mobility, I think, most of all, uh, and the attack speed, like you mentioned, not for Trace, but for someone else. Yeah. Another blue buff steal by Kuzan. And they're just going to wait for Sasin to come pick up his blue. This Lucian is really just useless, though. Just one of the main issues. He's a bloodthirster static shiv Lucian at 30 minutes into this game. And now he has to deal with a Randuin's Frozen Heart and Thornmail. He will do nothing at well, all. You know what's great is they're going to wait for them to fuse together and Sasin and Nuclear together will actually be a traditional AD carry build and they'll finally <laughs> do some damage against the enemy team. But they won't. Uh, well, that's, I, I hope they do. They do the fusion dance in the booth and meld into, into one champion. Can they get a real mid laner while they do that too? It's like, does like Azir come, like come into the game at the same time? That would be really helpful for them. That would be pretty good. The poke coming out from Sasa not hitting. I don't think Spenu is going to get that. So it's really up to just Sasa getting some really good poked out before they start a fight right now. So much armor on Trace though, so he's not a good target for the poke. And the dragon just melting to this four-man dragon tank from the Jyn Air Green Wings. Wow. Well, are they going to actually try and get some presence around the Baron right now? They have to be so worried about Jyn Air's ability to take this Baron. Meanwhile, yeah. there's basically no circumstance where Spenu Sonic Boom can actually bait a Baron because they're just too squishy to... They take too much damage from the Baron and then just die in the pit. So they ha <laughs> the only thing they can do is Siege. That sounds so depressing. <laughs> well, it's what happens when you don't it's have a true. tank. It is true. All Eve has is a veil. Oh, well, they're going to go ahead and try to take the enemy blue for Sasin. He'll pick that up. And they are in position around the Baron pit. Yeah, Jenner's like, okay. I, I hope uh -oh. they do it. All right, well, Spenu had to kind of tell what was up with that poke from Sasin, the piercing shot, not. Didn't want to save it for the cooldown. Didn't get the damage either. So now Genera Green Wings, I mean, they've swapped sides and the fight has to happen, but here's the Righteous Lord from Vivid and he gets the knockoff, but it's on to Trace. Trace is right where he wants to be in front of the entire enemy team. The Equalizer not really doing too much as the corruption comes in from Sauce and it's not going to go on to the carries of the enemy team. Kuzan takes a lot of damage, but Soul not able to do anything for his teammates and Nuclear gets caught after Sauce goes down. And does everyone get out alive from the generic Green Wings? It looks like it. Jay, the only one near death, but Chaser gonna keep him safe. The summer to heal, not able to give Chaser the kill, but Captain Jack picks up a triple. No, Chaser's 100% oh, killed checking that right away. <laughs> <laughs> the dream is dead, Chum. Oh, man. <laughs> Captain Jack might actually even get it this time because of his KDA. Uh, Captain Jack is playing these team fights really well, yeah. but that was a desperation engage from Spenu. 
and they put all their CC down onto a Mega Nar and then got absolutely crushed. I mean, yeah, you have the Mega Nar with Thornmail there, and Sasha and Yukura are like, great, a free target that we can Look kill at ourselves this. on. They glory in, and Trace just sits there in all, absorbing every single ultimate and not having any problems whatsoever. Sasha finds himself too far forward, targets of the depth charge. Trace is going to flash in and stun a lot of them. Meanwhile, the cleanup there, they don't even have to worry about nuclear because he does zero damage. Look how much damage he did to Che, hardly <laughs> any at all. Uh. Yeah, and even even if he did, that whole fight, Nuclear and Sasha were too busy running backwards. Nuclear does finish a last whisper now, so he'll do some damage to the minions. Well, that's what he needs. Minion damage. <laughs> Going for the sweet stats. <laughs> still, still not coming. Really confident that he'll do much damage to anyone on the opposing team. Well, Kuzan has some tankiness now, at least with the Rylai, so he's doing better in that regard. Oh, here we go. And there's another Pulverize. That's a good one onto Captain Jack, and Nuclear actually gets the kill this time around. Chaser sticking around, and Catch coming in from the back, but he actually gets hooked right back into the enemy team. The Equalizer coming in, again, only lands on the tanks of the enemy team. Chaser goes forward, puts the barrel down. Doesn't have explosive cast though, so they're just gonna back out. Uh, Captain Jack doesn't get MVP anymore after that. I decided. <laughs> <laughs> well, does this Kuzan get it with the <laughs> flash ult? <laughs> no. <laughs> Chaser can have it again. All right. I mean, just like walking up to that turret and then just eating a chain of corruption. It was a good combo, actually, from Spenu. Yeah. As they managed to headbutt Pulverize him straight into a chain of corruption and lock him down for the kill. That'll stall out the Baron pretty significantly right now. That was very important for Spenu. They want to have any shot of getting back into this game as remote as those odds are at this stage. Well, Sawson, 0-1-5. He's had that Muramana finish for some time now, has the last whisper himself, and now a Spectre's Cow to do even not more damage. But he kind of needs it, I guess. He wants that Banshees. To avoid any surprise shots or even all this coke coming in from the enemy side too, it's going to be pretty good, but you see how much good it's doing for catch, and it's not. Uh, so generic Green Wings continues sieging this with that cannon minion. And Captain Jack just poking everyone so the cannon minion stays alive. And it's been at that health for quite some time now. And it finally will help chunk down the tier 2 and mid in favor of the generic Green Wings. Yeah, and if you can't kill that cannon minion with a Varus and Illusion composition, you're just, you know, you're in trouble. Yeah, that's, it's pretty desperate. Well, maybe going for. Yet another dragon here, number four. Janair wants to clear out that top lane before it takes down their tower and then set up for yet another dragon. Yeah, I mean, they'll be right on time for that. Just roaming about, killing whatever is in his way, and they're actually just deciding, all right, let's just go top lane. They're all still in mid. So shove that in. Trace can keep them busy for a long time. He's pretty slippery. He's pretty tanky at the same time. And now Spenio finally moving on to that top side. But I think it might just go down before they show up with this Trinity Force on Captain Jack and the Bloodthirster. Yeah, very There's efficient. There's a righteous glory. He runs forward. Well, only got five people up here, though. Oh, oh wow. Nuclear. nuclear gets caught and cash right there in the middle. <laughs> that was just. Oh. <laughs> Goodness, Trace shows up. Doesn't have Mega Nar though, but he doesn't really care. There's a slow on to Sasa and a double slow chaser looking to just go forward, maybe get another body slam, but they're not going to be able to too close to an inverter tower. Well, Dragon's live, but they still are just gonna move forward. Why not? Take out the inhibitor. There's not a lot of threat left. We dodge a couple of these piercing arrows, and that tower is dead. Jack with a full shield, too, on that Bloodthirster. Yeah, look at that. He takes a hail of arrows. Doesn't really care. Dodges another one, but there's Chain of Corruption forces the QSS out of Captain Jack, and now Trace gets knocked backwards, but he's too tanky. So Spenu loses two turrets in the top lane, 
And now will generic green wings go to the dragon, or will Spinner be able to kind of sneak it out right before they get there? They're pretty busy with all these minions, though. I think they'll be actually be able to sneak out this dragon. They definitely have time if they want to, because they have the oh. recall timer and the time for everyone to get back. Lots of home guard boots oh, coming man. in, but they should be able to get this. Oh, I don't. I feel uh, like Varus was a little late because he was too busy trying to clear it. The AD carry should have come first. I mean, Soul could have oh, come guess. a little bit later. All right, there they go. All five are there in time, though. The generic Greenways will not accept this, and Shay pulls Vivid back there. It's a chain of corruption not hitting chaser, anyone, and chaser. there's the flash four from oh. Kuzan. An explosive cast actually keeps Nuclear in stage, but Trace is gonna keep him alive. Sazen has to hightail it out of there with the Yomu's Ghost Blade. Nuclear gets stuck with this Nar, gets pulled back. Luden's Echo activating on that one too from Kuzan, and Catch and Sazen the only ones alive. Oh no, Chaser's contribution, it's going down even further. He did hit a really good explosive cast right really there good. to help that cleanup party go forward. Now they're going to be able to just put to push down the inhibitor, probably two right here in one single go. Yeah, and should be able to, no problem. Now whether they can close the game or not is a different story. Yeah, only 10 seconds left or so on reinforcements for Spenu, so I think Spenu should be able to hold off. Or at the race, I think Generic Greenway is just, you know, I don't think it's worth really taking the big risk here to try to finish. They can back off. Baron's coming up for 45 seconds. And that should be theirs to take. Just more and more objectives. Very slow closure here from Generic. They could probably take a few more risks with their yeah. massive lead that they have. And the fact that they have such a huge scaling advantage by this point in the game. It would be insanely difficult for them to lose, even if they wanted to. Yeah, I mean, you could you could take a couple extra hits from Sauce and Tuba for the game. You, probably, the you could probably 4v5 them at this point, honestly. Yeah. So, all right, setting up for yet another Baron for the final push. Need it, even though there are two inhibitors already down, I guess. Man, yeah, I'm just looking at the items, and I just can't, just can't figure what Spenu can do. Nothing. Nothing. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the answer. The charge forward just gets interrupted entirely by the Death Stretch. Captain Jack putting out some free damage, dodges the Chain of Corruption. He's eventually going to get chained a little bit from the secondary proc, and Chaser just zoning out people alongside Trace. And Captain Jack finally Valkyries forward after he gets a couple of kills. He'll get a double. And Trace just chasing after the enemy. He just flashes forward for the ultimate. Doesn't even need to pick up his house as he goes forward. That is a monstrous Gnar in the front lines. And the ace going to Captain Jack with the triple kill. And the Jinnar Green Wings will be able to secure the win in game two to get another W with their match history. That's right. And that'll put them up to three and one overall, even though they have had a softer schedule. And again, Sonic Boom from Spenu, not picking up a game, but at least looking co very competitive in one of them. Yeah, well, good game uh, by Generic Greenwings and Spenu. I, you know, I think you're hitting the nail on the head, Machi, when you say that they have good ideas, they have good compositions for the early game. They just need to figure out how to continue that synergy towards the later portion and how to work against the enemies. And I, a lot of that, we see that with new teams every time, is that they just don't have experience playing longer games. Because usually, you know, if they stop amateur, other amateur teams, it's going to be 20, 25 minutes. You know, when you play solo, you're not going to get the same experience. So well, we'll see how they do as the season moves on forward. Yeah, much cleaner game from Jinair that time around as well. Not falling behind in the mid-game. But I'm waiting for, for Spenu to actually start taking some series here because they are definitely better than their record indicates. And they 